Halleluja. Halleluja. Not once did Jesus fall. Every time he retorted with the word of God. Every time he retorted with the word of God. He was able to retort with the word of God because he knew the word of God. Dear brothers and sisters, many times we fall. We are famished in our life. Through our daily problems, through our friends, through peer pressure, through our family, we get famished. And when we are famished, it is the time when Satan enters in because Satan is a coward. And at that time, if we do not know the word of God, we will have nothing to help us. We do not know the word of God because we do not read the word of God. We do not read the word of God because the word of God is not considered fashionable. It is not considered fashionable. None of us would would want to be seen holding the word of God. I remember when we were studying in Bangalore and we traversed to the Kanyakumari Express whenever we go back after our holidays. I remember we were three brothers in that compartment in the train and there was this young boy who was sitting just opposite us. And as he was sitting there, he had the Da Vinci Code in his hand. And he kept it in his hand all throughout. Whenever he would go to the bathroom or he would go outside, he would put the, put the Da Vinci Code on the seat, seeing to it that the Da Vinci Code is put upwards so that everyone sees that it is the Da Vinci Code. And all the time he did that, from the time we enter the train till we reach Bangalore, not once did this boy open the Da Vinci Code and read it. It was a fashion statement. I do read the Da Vinci Code. None of us would be caught dead with a Bible, but we have no problem to have the Da Vinci Code in our hand. Dear brothers and sisters, are we staying away from the Word of God because it is not fashionable to us? It's true it might not be fashionable, but it is essential for us. Again, I remember, you know, when we brothers travel, in Bangalore, you have a lot of nursing students. And one day when we were traveling by the train, there were these nursing students with us. We brothers quietly, when it was time to sleep, we went off to sleep. And underneath our blankets, we put the rosary and we were saying the rosary. These girls put on the light, they opened their Bibles, they read their Bibles, they sat together, they said their rosary, then made the sign of the cross and went to sleep. That was the day we were quite embarrassed. Because for us, we thought it is not fashionable. For them, it was fashionable. Dear brothers and sisters, the word of God, even if it is not fashionable, it is essential for us to live our Christian vocation. Without knowing the word, we will not be able to understand what God has to speak to us. Be open to the word. Go back home. Take the word of God and start reading it. The reason why many Protestant brethren are able to, to speak to us and, and speak to us and show us how less we know about the word is because we do not know anything about it. Because we do not read it. Open the word and become one with the word. You have to intermingle with the word and become one with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, in the deep Pacific Ocean, you have a fish called the deep sea angler fish. There is a speciality about this fish. The male finds it very difficult to find a mate. And so the male will usually latch on to a female. The male is always smaller than the female. It latches on to the female and then it starts the mating process. But there is something special over here because after that the male does not leave the female anymore. It just latches on and they get fused together forever. After that the male starts feeding out of the female's blood vessels. So they are no more two, they are one. And that is exactly what the Word of God has to become in our life. When we latch on to the Word of God, if we should become one with the Word, so much so, our nourishment should come through the Word of God. Our nourishment should come through the Word of God. This is what we read very clearly in Ezekiel chapter 3. 
Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 2 so I opened my mouth and he gave me the scroll to eat he said mortal eat the scroll that I give you and fill yourself with it hallelujah hallelujah we eat the word of God and make it one with us once it becomes a part of us when we are in times of trouble and difficulty when we are famished it is the word which will help us out of our problems hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus praise you Jesus hallelujah dear brothers and sisters for one week you heard the word of God and for one week you heard what we spoke to you whatever we speak to you you will accept because you don't know but now after this when you start reading the word of God you will know because you have experienced Jesus this is exactly what we see happening in John chapter 4 in John chapter 4 when Jesus speaks to the Samaritan woman the Samaritan woman experiences the love of Jesus and then she goes back to the village and she says you know I think I have found the Savior I think I have seen the Christ and the whole village goes to Jesus and after that they hear Jesus they hear the word being spoken and we read very clearly in John chapter 4 verse 42 they said to the woman it is no longer because of what you said that we believe for we have heard for ourselves and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world hallelujah hallelujah we now believe because we know him we have experienced him through what he has spoken to us dear brothers and sisters through this you will experience what God speaks to you about hallelujah hallelujah dear brothers and sisters we are all people who use the mobile right is there anyone here who doesn't have a mobile that's easier the question because if you ask earlier you could ask anybody has a mobile and you will have a few hands now we have to ask do you not have a mobile and you will have to raise your hands praise the Lord praise the Lord and now it has become an integral part of our life so much so that we feel like asking God you know why don't you put a pouch on our hand when you're making us put a pouch on our hand so we can push that mobile inside earlier the girls used to have a handkerchief in their hand now it's the mobile in the hand because they don't have pockets for us it's all the mobile every time the mobile in the hand and all the time taking it out looking is the message coming in my boyfriend is he messaging me my girlfriend is he mess is she messaging me all the time even if there is definitely the the mobile gives an indication if there's a message but still you're busy taking out and looking is there a message no message you're waiting for the phone you're waiting for the call the mobile has become an integral part of your life dear brothers and sisters there is a mobile given to us by Jesus the Word of God when he keeps speaking to us all the time he keeps messaging us all the time how many of us open it how many of us open it your mobiles that you have with you you pay and you get this comes free of charge hallelujah 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 dear brothers and sisters be open to the word be open to the Lord as he speaks to you through the word and you will keep experiencing him every moment hallelujah there are many people nowadays who go behind the art of living we have to be taught the art of living by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar and everyone is running over there dear brothers and sisters 2000 years back so many years back so many centuries back God gave us the art of living the Bible are we opening it and listening to the Bible are we opening it and reading the art of living this is the art of living open it and you will be able to know how to live hallelujah 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 praise the Lord praise the Lord dear brothers and sisters these are three pillars that you're supposed to hold on to of course you have many many pillars that come complementary along with it like the prayer group which I won't discuss because it was discussed earlier on keep with the Lord in prayer keep with the Lord through the sacraments keep in the Lord through the Word of God and you will never ever fall I remember I told you I attended my first retreat over here 
in 1994. It was on the other side of the hall, of the road. It was in a small hall. And there, just like you, I too was touched. By the third day, I, I was really transformed by what was happening. And as I sat in my dormitory that day, I could see the NH47, that is this main road, the national highway. And a fear just came over me. And I thought to myself, well, it's easy to do things over here. But I will have to go through this same road every day to the college, to my same old friends, to my same old situations. I don't think I will be able to do it. And I told the Lord, Lord, I don't think I will be able to do it. And that fear just gripped within me. And I remember Father Augustine during the, during the adoration, he used to get the names of the people and the Lord used to give out a message through them, through, through, through him. And at that time, I too had that desire to have my name be called out and a message to come along with that. And I had registered myself there as Michael. Nobody in the retreat center knew that I had another name and that was Vijay, what they called me at home. And I looked around, I personally knew there were four other Michaels in that retreat hall. There must have been others, but I knew there were, personally I knew there were four others. And I told the Lord, Lord, if you want to give me a message, don't call me Michael, because I wouldn't know if it is for me or if it's for them. So you call me by Vijay. And nobody in that retreat center knew me as Vijay. During the adoration, that was the night when, when I had this fear within me. The next day during the adoration, Father called out very clearly, Vijay, the Lord is telling you, do not be afraid, you go out, I will be with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, we have a God who answers our prayers. The Lord promised me that day, I will be with you. It's been 12 years since that, since that retreat. The Lord has been with me all throughout. You know, you're having this power, 2007. There was a power evangelization, 1996, where we had it somewhere in this place. I sat like you in this retreat hall. I was a college-going person. I sat like you in this retreat hall. There were many people who were attending that retreat. The Lord promised me in 94 that I will be with you always, and the Lord has kept his promise. All throughout, he has kept his promise. You know, you look at me and you'll think that, well, he always wanted to become a priest. No, I never wanted to become a priest. I, was, I joined the, the seminary when I was doing my ICWA, that's my cost accounting. I've completed my first year and joined after that. I never wanted to become a priest. There was, there was no idea about it. So much so, my mother used to say, even at the age of five, I had a concept about my wife and my, my family. My wife would never be a doctor because my aunt is a doctor. She's always out on night duty, and so my cousins are alone. And so I decided my wife would never be a doctor. So I always had this concept of a family. And for me to even think about the priesthood was impossible. But for God, nothing is impossible. For God, nothing is impossible. Today, I stand in the same retreat center where for the first time, the Lord transformed me. For the first time, I truly experienced the Lord. Today, I stand in that same retreat center preaching to thousands and thousands. If that is not the promise of God, what is it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who was that clap for? Yes, if it is for Jesus, give a clap once again to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. The clap never goes to human beings. It is always for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, again, I tell you, you look at me and you say, well, you preach. He's not scared of preaching. He, he must have been born a preacher. When he fell from his, his mother's womb itself, he must have been preaching. Well, None of that took place. I remember the first time I got onto a stage when I, was in, when I was in school. It was for a debate 
and nearly half the school, our whole division was there. I stood on that podium and the only thing that came out from my mouth was a lot of sounds. A lot of sounds came out and nothing more. And everyone stood and laughed. And as they laughed, after that I never got onto the stage because I was scared. I was scared to stand in front of a crowd. It was through the, through the retreat and through the inner healing that I was healed of this problem. After that, today I'm able to stand in the presence of thousands and preach the word of God because God healed me of my problem. Dear brothers and sisters, I say these things only because I understand your feelings. I know you are anxious. There are many who came to me and said, we don't know how to go out. We are scared to go out. Dear brothers and sisters, don't get scared. The disciples were scared. And Jesus promises them in the last verse of the Gospel of St. Matthew, the very last verse of the Gospel of St. Matthew, Jesus promises, I will be with you till the end of time. It is a promise of God. It is the same thing that he's telling each one of you. Do not be afraid. When you throw away that cigarette, when you throw away that addiction to to drugs, when you throw away that addiction to alcohol, do not be afraid. I will be with you. If you have faith and you hold on to the pillars of faith, you will never fall because your God will be with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Dear brothers and sisters, make a decision to be with the Lord. Make a decision to be with the Lord. Make a decision to sit in prayer. Make a decision to read the word of God. Make a decision to, to frequent the sacraments and you will see, I assure you, you will never fall in your life. You will have temptations. That is definite. You will have temptations, but you will never fall because Jesus will be there for you. There is a beautiful poem and I'll conclude with this. A beautiful poem that is called The Footprints in the Sand. I suppose many of you must have already come across it. It was earlier said to be anonymous, but now it is attributed to a lady called Ma Margaret Powers. And this, this poem goes like this. The poet says, I was once walking on the beach along with the Lord. And as I reached the end of my life, I turned back and looked at the footprints in the sand. Everywhere there were two sets of footprints. One, the Lord's, and one mine. And when I looked a little more closely, I saw that in certain parts, there were only one set of footprints. And when I looked closely, I understood that those were the times when I was desperate in life and I was broken. And I was shocked. And I told the Lord and I questioned the Lord, Lord, why was it that when I was depressed and I was desperate in life that you chose to leave me? Why did I see only one set of footprints? Why was I all alone? And the Lord looked and said, My child, you are so precious to me. The times you saw only one set of footprints, that was the time that I was carrying you. That was the time that I was carrying you. I will never leave you. Hallelujah. 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 To your brothers and sisters, this is the same thing he tells us. When we are in trouble and difficulties, when we have temptations, it will be the Lord who will hold us. As long as you stay with him, he will never let you down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you this through my personal experience. And that's one thing I want all of you to go back with. And the one prayer that I always make when I see the youth that the same experience that I have, dear Jesus, give it to them so that they will never fall. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This program comes to you from the House of God, Divine Retreat Center, where residential retreats are held in seven languages, starting every Sunday to Friday, 52 weeks of the year. Send your responses, inquiries, and prayer requests to the director, Divine Vision, Divine Retreat Center, Murigur, Chalakudi, 680316, Kerala, South India. Telephone 91480270 Email divine at md2.vsnl.com
www.net.in.